Today's lab is called density and we're going to be determining the density of this aluminum sample and also the density of water using several methods that will allow us to practice our, um, our laboratory methods. Now the density of an object is the ratio of its mass to its volume. You can write it sort of like this. Mass is equal to density times volume. And so you see if you want to find an object's density, you just need to know its mass and its volume. And so we can do this experimentally. You can determine this aluminum sample's mass using this pan balance. You can determine its volume probably several different ways. In activity one, we'll determine the volume geometrically using these plastic rulers. We can also determine the volume by observing how much water it displaces within a graduated cylinder. That's another way of determining volume. So right there you have two different ways of determining volume, which corresponds to two different ways of, de of measuring the density of this material. Now another thing I want to talk to you about is the buoyant force. The buoyant force is a force upward on a submerged object. And the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water or fluid that is displaced. So if I submerge an object in this water and I'm measuring the tension in the string, I have a force probe here. This is a dual range force sensor. It's connected to the lab probe, which is connected to the computer. It's going to measure the tension in this string. As I submerge this cylinder into the water, the tension in the string is going to change. Now let's take a look at our formula. Mass is equal to rho times V. If I multiply both sides by gravity, what that tells me is mg on the left, that's weight, is equal to rho Vg, density times volume times gravity. And so this weight of the object, if I know its volume and its density, I just multiply that by g to get its weight. The same thing with water. If I know the mass of the water that's displaced, or I'm sorry, the volume of the water that's displaced, and I know the density of water, and I know g, I can determine the weight of the water displaced, or the buoyant force. So let's take a look at this water in the fluid. Let's say this applies to the water that's here in the graduated cylinder. The weight of the water, I said before, is equal to the buoyant force up on the cylinder. So the buoyant force is equal to the density of the water times the volume of the water that's been displaced, because this is the, this is the weight of the displaced water, times gravity. Now if you look at this equation, you should see right away it's a linear equation. On one side you have a variable, the buoyant force, that some, as we lower an object into water, as it begins to be submerged, the buoyant force will increase and increase until it reaches a maximum when the object is fully submerged. That's equal to the density of the water, this is a constant, times the volume of the water displaced, and again as we lower an object into water it displaces more and more water until it's totally submerged and it's displaced the maximum amount of water. So this is another variable as an object gets lowered into the water. And then gravity is also a constant. So you have a linear equation in the form of y equals mx, where buoyant force is y, m, the slope, is equal to the product of density and gravity, and then x is this other variable here, the amount of water, the volume of water that's been displaced. So, as we lower an object into this graduated cylinder, and I can do that by adjusting this, um, screw, if I lower it into the water by increments, I should be able to measure those two quantities. I'm measuring the amount of water that's been displaced, and at the same time I can read the tension in the stream. And it's important to note, the tension in the string is not the buoyant force. You'll have to determine what the buoyant force is, and as it turns out, the buoyant force is what causes 
the tension in the string to be less than the actual weight of the object. So you'll have to figure out how to determine the buoyant force from the reading of the tension in the string. So you've got a way to find the buoyant force, which changes as this gets lower and lower. You've got a way using the graduated cylinder to determine the amount of water that's displaced, which volume gets larger and larger as this gets lower and lower. And eventually you can build a data set of buoyant force versus changing volume. And then from the linear relationship between buoyant force and volume of water displaced, you should be able to look at the regression of that graph and calculate the density of the fluid. So good luck with it and uh, hope you have fun.